Welcome, Pleasant Grove family, and thank you for joining us for today's virtual worship experience. We are happy to have you with us. Sing along with our praise team and get into the word with our pastor, Dr. Sammy J. Dow. Leave a comment in the thread and let us know where you're worshiping from. Remember to like, share, and subscribe at The Grove Atlanta on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Vimeo, and YouTube. At The Grove, we are transformed people transforming the world. Hey, family, let's get ready for worship. Well, it's another day that the Lord has kept us, another day that the Lord has blessed us, and we are excited to be in worship one more time. Oh, come on, put your hands together and declare that this is indeed the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship one more week that the Lord has graced us. Amen. Church family, as we begin worship today, come on, let's recite together our vision and our mission statement. And we read together, we are a progressive community of believers being transformed by God and transforming others through spiritual development, radical generosity, holistic wellness, social witness, and community engagement. Our mission is to be transformed people transforming the world. Well, we've come to praise the Lord. So right where you are, if you don't mind putting your hands together. Come on. Let's go. He's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. Here we go. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory above the nation. Let's the, sing the Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory above the nation. And his glory above the nation. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory above the nation. And his glory above the nation. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory above the nation. And his glory above the nation. So give God the highest praise, acknowledging him always and all the Let's sing that again. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And this glory above the nation. And this glory above the nation. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And this glory above the nation. And this glory above the nation. So give God the highest praise, acknowledging Him always, and all the people say, Halle, 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 Yes, he is. Oh, if you love to praise the Lord, sing, yeah. Oh, if the Lord's been good to you, sing, yeah. Oh, if you love to praise the Lord, sing, yeah. Come on. Oh, if the Lord's been good to you, sing, yeah. Thank you. Hallelujah. 
God for another opportunity to gather and worship. We're so grateful to God for each and every one of you worshiping with us today. We don't believe it's a coincidence that you're here, but that God led you here to share with us because he wants to speak something in and through your life as a result of you being in worship with us today. Church family, I want you to help me celebrate all of our first time visitors, those who are worshiping with us online for the very first time. We want you to know that you are our VIPs today, our virtually important people. And we're so grateful to have you sharing with us. Do us a huge favor. Leave us a comment in the thread. Let us know who you are, how you connected with us, who invited you to share with us. If you're new to the area, let us know so that we can welcome you and give you a big old virtual hug to let you know just how excited we are to have you in worship today. And church family, don't let them worship by themselves, but I want you to make sure that you drop a comment. Let them know that you see them. Let them know that you're excited to have them sharing with us in worship. As I always remind you, make sure you're connected with us on all of our digital platforms at The Grove Atlanta on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Vimeo, YouTube. When you get to YouTube, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell so that you get notifications when we drop new content. We want to make sure that we're taking advantage of the means, the tools that we have to communicate with you during this season want to remind you, as I've shared with you over the course of the last week, as we continue monitoring the situation with the COVID-19 virus and the Delta variant, we have determined, we have discerned that it's in our best interest to push back our relaunch of in-person worship experiences. We're hoping to be able to relaunch those in-person worship experiences in October, but we've not yet set a date. We want to continue monitoring the situation to make sure that when we do, it is safe for us to gather together corporately. We don't want to put anyone in harm's way. So we want you to continue doing your part to stay safe, uh, to, to stay healthy, to stay protected. I want you to prayerfully consider your vaccination when booster shots become available. I want you to prayerfully consider that so that together we can all do our part to get the pandemic under control. Amen. Well, come on, church family. It's time to worship the Lord through giving. We are so grateful to God for the opportunity to give back to God a portion of that which he has so generously and graciously given each and every one of us. A dime from every dollar, 10%, uh, the first fruit of our increase is what God says he wants us to bring into the storehouse so that there will literally be meat in God's house. He says that when you do that, he'll open the windows of heaven and pour us out blessings that we won't even have enough room to receive. But we only get that kind of overflow bl blessing and abundance when we first honor the Lord in our giving. As a church family, we're striving to be a 100% tithing congregation, which means each and every time we gather for worship, even in virtual space, we believe that someone is stretching their faith for the very first time to honor God in their giving. There are a number of ways that you can give here at The Grove via cash, check, or money order. You can wrap those in an envelope, you can mail those to us, or drop them in our mail slot here at the church. Our address is 566 Whitlock Avenue Northwest, 
Marietta, Georgia, 30064. Or you can log on to our website, pleasantgrove.org slash give. You can give easily and securely via our website. Or you can download the Givelify app, set it up, and in three quick clicks, you'll be done. However you choose to give, it's entirely between you and God. We just want to make sure that we honor God with what he requires of us so that we can be recipients of all he wants to continue pouring in each of our lives. As you prepare your gifts unto the Lord, we recite together now as a church family our radical generosity confession. And we read together, I bring all of my tithes and offerings into the storehouse so that there will be meat in God's house. I believe that the windows of heaven will be opened and blessings poured out that I won't have room enough to receive according to Malachi 3 and 10. I am a cheerful giver and bring my tithes and offerings willingly according to 2 Corinthians 9 and 7. I will practice radical generosity and random acts of kindness in my family, my church, and my community. I decree and declare that my life and the lives of those connected to me will be transformed because of my obedience. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as you continue worshiping the Lord through giving, our praise team is coming now to prepare us for today's message.
and we do declare in this moment that we really love you because of all that you've done for us for the way that you've given us victory we have to declare that we love you because you loved us even when we didn't love ourselves so we bless you today we honor you today we magnify you today and we ask in this moment that you would speak a word that changes and transforms us one that equips and empowers us because we want to become who you've destined for us to become we want to accomplish in this world what you have deemed necessary for us to accomplish we bless you now we magnify you speak now lord for your servants are indeed listening it's in the strong and powerful name of jesus the christ we do pray and we all say together amen amen and amen well i want to begin a short series of sermons today if you'll grab your bibles as we go to the book of numbers numbers chapter 13 Numbers chapter 13, I'll read verses 1 through 3, then I'll jump down and read verses 17 through 20. I'll be reading today from the New International Version of Scripture, Numbers chapter 13, beginning at verse 1, verse 2, verse 3, then we'll jump down to verse 17. It reads, uh, the Lord said to Moses, send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites. From each ancestral tribe, send one of its leaders. So at the Lord's command, Moses sent them out from the desert of Paran. All of them were leaders of the Israelites. Now drop down to verse 17. When Moses sent them to explore Canaan, he said, go up through the Negev and, and on into the hill country. See what the land is like and whether the people who live there are strong or weak, few or many. What kind of land do they live in? Is it good or bad? What kind of towns do they live in? Are they walled or are they unwalled or fortified? How is the soil? Is it fertile or poor? Are there trees in it or not? Do your best to bring back some of the fruit of the land. It was the season for the first ripe grapes. Amen. I'd like to tag this weekend's message, Investigation Required. Investigation Required. Knowledge is power. Power provides information. Information leads to education. Education breeds wisdom, and wisdom is liberation. Many people cannot experience liberation because of a lack of knowledge. That saying from Israel I of War helps us shape this narrative found here in Numbers 13 because it follows a remarkable set of events and divine experiences. God had already informed Abraham, the father of the faith, that his descendants would endure 400 years of slavery in a foreign land and that God would punish those who enslaved them. But the children of Israel would come out of those years with great possessions. God has now delivered the Israelites from this bondage by softening Pharaoh's heart with the manifestation of the plagues. He's led them along the journey of escape from Egypt, including the parting of the Red Sea. He has sustained them over the course of their journey. Now we have reached the point in the story that was supposed to show how the drama of the Exodus and the wilderness wanderings was supposed to reach a triumphant conclusion. This saga was supposed to detail for us the steps taken that led the children of Israel directly into their promised land. However, the story we see unfolded beginning here in Numbers 13 is an interesting turn of events in the storied history of the Israelite people. The people of Israel, having uh, survived the very difficult journey from Mount Sinai to Kadesh, now find themselves on the borders of the promised land. 
the, the, the narrative of the spies' expedition into Canaan leads to the story of the divine judgment upon Israel. Twelve men, one chosen from each of the twelve tribes, are sent in to spy out the land. They are sent, according to verse 1, at the command of the Lord. But in Deuteronomy, it was the people who asked Moses to send spies into Canaan. Biblical scholars suggest that this proposal of the people pleased Moses so that he laid the matter before the Lord, who then commanded him to send out uh, 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 spies for this particular mission. The spies were all men of rank in their tribes. Verse 3 says that they were the heads of the children of Israel. And obeying God's instructions, Moses sends out the spies to see what the land is really like. The instructions that Moses gives the spies are recorded there in verses 17 through 20. The commission was definite and specific. They were to penetrate the south part of the land and to make their way through the hill country and they were to seek to make some assessment of the possible military strength of the people. They needed to understand the people's aptitude for war. Uh, they were to get an estimation of the economic resources of the land. This was an astute and businesslike proposal with both the more immediate objective of conquest and the longer-term prospect of settlement in the land that is now in their view. Uh, over the last few weeks, I've been wrestling with this particular text, wrestling to understand God telling Moses to send spies into the promised land. God tells Moses to send spies into the land, watch what the text says, which I am giving to the Israelites. This is the land. God promised Abraham that he would give to his descendants. This is the land they've been journeying and wanting to see. But God doesn't just give them the land. He commands Moses to send spies into the land to investigate and to evaluate the details of what they see and to bring back a sample of the fruit of the land that is being produced. The land is theirs, church family. It is waiting for them. But before they can march into what God has already prepared for them, they must first investigate what God has promised to give them. There are enemies of the Israelites who are occupying the land currently. But God says, I still, even in the face of enemies occupying that land, I want you to go and investigate it. I want you to go and take a look at your promise. And here's what struck me, though, church family. If God had already promised this land, uh, Canaan, to the Israelites, why did Moses need to send spies into what God had already said he was giving them. I was rehearsing this narrative here in Numbers 13, and it struck me uh, because the people of Israel have spent generations in bondage and in slavery, and, and they were promised this land that they are now being sent to investigate. However, they are having to investigate because they are not yet fully prepared to walk into what God has already said he will give them. Uh, so God creates this commandment. He says, send the spies uh, into, uh, into Canaan so that, they can so that God could fully test the Israelites' preparation to walk into their promised land. God says, send spies in there and, and, and have them to bring back a report because God knows that whatever report they return with will indicate how prepared they are for the magnitude of the blessing that God wants to give them. I'll say that again. God knows that when he sends the spies into their promise to investigate and to evaluate what he is preparing to give them, 
whatever they say about the land when they come back is an indication of if they are ready to receive what God says he wants to give. He says, make sure that the spies you select, Moses, don't just send anybody in there. He says, no, I want you to send the leaders of the ancestral tribes of Israel. He says, uh, Moses, I want you to send the people who would typically sit on the front row on Sunday morning. He says, I want you to send the people who would sit in the pulpit and stand behind the podium. I want you to send the leaders who make the decisions. I want you to send the Sunday school teachers. I want you to send the Bible study teachers. I want you to send the ones who have responsibility for everybody else because when you send them, it'll give me an indication of what I'm really working with before I release you into the promised land. He says, I don't want you to just send anyone to investigate this blessing. He says, no, I want you to send some folks in who should have the spiritual maturity and aptitude to understand what is happening because whatever condition the leaders are in it is evidence of what's happening among the people and the question we've got to wrestle with here is can God trust you enough to send you to investigate the tension has been building in the chapters leading up to their arrival on the border. Numbers chapter 11 uh, and 12 include stories of rebellion uh, there in the fringes of the camp. A uh, uh, fire from the Lord burned on the outskirts after the people were found complaining. And then there amongst all of the people, the Lord delivers quail and a plague to the people who complained about not having meat. And, and even right in the heart of leadership Miriam and Aaron oppose Moses' leadership and as a result they have to suffer some consequences and immediately following the rebellion God sends the command for Moses to send the spies to survey and to investigate the land hold on God wait a minute you mean to tell me after all of their rebellion and disrespect for the leader that God has placed over them, God still wanted to make sure the people were prepared to receive his promise. God knew that the children of Israel had the skills to manage the promised land because they had spent time in bondage in Egypt managing Pharaoh's empire. He, he, he knew they had the skills to obtain the promised land. But now God needs to make sure the Israelites have some information to go along with their skills so that they can effectively manage what God wants to do in their lives. Let me move. Many of us want the promises that God has for us. We want the blessings and the breakthrough. But we don't want to have to spend any time investigating and evaluating what we say we want from God. We honestly believe that if God is going to give it to us, we shouldn't have to do the work of investigating, evaluating, and preparing. We believe that if God has already promised it, there should not be any work for us to accomplish the promise. But the reality is God will send us into an investigation and evaluation mode just like he sent the Israelites so that we are prepared for the promises that he has made to us. After all of this, God commands Moses to send some of the same rebellious leaders to investigate the promised land. God commands Moses to send the spies into Canaan ahead of the Israelites' interest into their promised land to make sure that they had the information they needed to manage what God was about to release. Can I tell you something? Why is this important for us? Because our mismanagement of God's promise more often than not is not the result of a lack of desire. I'll say that again. We oftentimes desire to manage God's promise as well. But oftentimes we mismanage God's promise because we simply don't have enough information. It's possible to have a word from God but still need more information from God 
before we can fully walk into the word that God has spoken. It's possible for God to want to do something in our lives, but we still have to investigate and evaluate it so that we understand all of what will be required of us after God does his part. It's possible for God to have already set up how you are going to walk into the promise, but you still have to do some work to ensure that you fully understand what you are about to walk into. Uh, as I was growing up, my parents would shape it this way. You better be careful what you ask for because you just might get it and it might require more of you than you thought a next level or this new blessing or this deliverance or this breakthrough would require of you and God says before I send you into a season where I will provide for you all that I have promised I will first make you spend some time investigating preparing and evaluating so that when you walk into what I have for you you walk into it with a full investigative report so that you don't mismanage what I have released to you simply because you didn't have enough information. He says, I want you to send the spies into the land and I want you to make sure that they bring back a report. Here's all I'm really trying to shape for us this, this weekend. I'll move to a close. God will arrange seasons where we have to investigate what he has already promised so that we have the information to manage it well. God will arrange seasons where we have to investigate what he has already promised so that we have the information to manage our next effectively. In these moments, God says, I'm not looking for you to do anything other than investigate. I'm not looking for you to work it out. I'm not looking for you to develop the strategy. I'm not looking for you to develop the plan. Uh, he says your responsibility is to store and process what you see so that you know what I am about to accomplish on your behalf. And can I tell you, I don't mind having to investigate a promised land that is currently filled with giants if I already carry a promise that God is going to give me victory over the giants, if I'm obedient to the investigation. <laughs> Remember, I told you there are enemies, there are giants that are currently occupying this land. And, and God sends them in to investigate a land filled with giants that look bigger than them. But can I tell you, you don't have to worry about investigating a situation that looks bigger than you because even though it looks bigger than you now, you don't understand just how much God will fight on your behalf to take care of what looks too large for you to handle by yourself. So go investigate, go prepare, go evaluate, go figure it out, go get a report, go bring back some of the fruit of the land go learn the directions and the terrain and the territory because just because there's a giant there now doesn't mean God doesn't have the ability to give you a smooth stone and a slingshot and you can stand before the giants in your land now and cast your smooth stone and watch giants in your life begin to fall because you've been obedient to what God has called you to do so the question for us becomes what do we learn when God sends us to investigate the promises he has made to us. What do seasons of having to investigate reveal about our character and our faith? What, what, God, what is really the benefit of having to spy on something that you have already said belongs to us? First, I believe the text is tailored to teach us that when we investigate, it promotes our drive. It promotes our drive. Look, look, look right there. It says in verse two that the Lord said to Moses, I want you to send some of them to explore 
the land of Canaan. I want you to send some of them to explore the land of Canaan because the Hebrew word used here is tour, tour, T-U-R, which means to turn about, to wander about, and to take it all in. You catch that? The word explore here really means that I want you to go and I want you to turn about. I want you to wander throughout the land. I want you to take all of what you see in. The term does not speak of information that would lead to a military strategy. God says, I, I, I don't need you to develop a battle plan. He says, I just want you to explore. I want you to tour. I want you to turn from here to there. I want you to wander. I want you to take it all in. I want you to behave as a tourist when you visit a new city, looking up at all of the tall buildings and the skyscrapers, and you're taking pictures in front of every monument. He says, I need you to take it all in. I need you to explore because the investigation that they had been assigned to complete was designed to allow the spies to take in all of the beauty of what they were about to inherit. God wanted this spy investigation journey to make them fall so in love with the promised land that they would stop at nothing to obtain what God was preparing for them. God wanted this investigation to energize the people. God wanted them to be inspired. God wanted their drive and their energy to be ignited by the goodness of the land. God wanted them to see that if he could allow their enemies to enjoy this much bounty and beauty, then most certainly there was even more bounty and beauty in store for the children of Israel. God wanted them to see the living situations and the living conditions of the giants that were currently occupying the land so that they fully understand that the wealth of the wicked, the wealth that the wicked has been enjoying was being prepared for God's people. But this isn't the first time in the Bible that we've seen God giving his people a preview of what God wants to do in their lives. And here God is again giving his people a preview view because if he can get us to see the fullness of where he wants to take us we won't become stuck in rehearsing the story of where we've always been and can somebody say I've been in moments like that where God has given me a snapshot God has given me a dream God has given me a deja vu moment and when I think of all that God has given me a preview of it pales in comparison to what God God has the ability to do so I'll go into the promised land and I'll investigate what God has called me to investigate because I realize God is giving me a preview because if he gives me a preview it'll make me more driven it'll make me more determined it'll make me more disciplined it'll make me more dedicated it'll make me more committed to what God has for me and when I get a preview of what God wants to do it gives me all of the motivation and all of the energy and all of the tenacity to keep going no matter what happens because I've already seen some of what God has in store for me. He sends us to investigate because it, it, he sends us to investigate because it promotes it promotes our drive. But he also sends us to investigate because watch this it determines our preferred destination it determines our preferred destination look at verse 3 so at the Lord's command Moses sent them out from the desert of Paran watch this because I started thinking about this thing the desert of Paran the name Paran is derived from the Hebrew verb meaning to glorify or to beautify Catch this, catch this. He's Moses, uh, the Lord's command is for Moses to send them out. Their beginning point, where they currently are located, is the desert of Paran. And, and Paran is derived from the Hebrew verb meaning to glorify or to beautify. Uh, th 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 this can be interpreted as to add glory to or to make beautiful. So here the children of Israel are 
in a dry wilderness place that is being described using words like glorify and beautify. But they are being called to investigate a place that God says is flowing with milk and honey. They have become comfortable in the wilderness and the desert of Paran because they have spent a significant amount of time there. But they have a promise that says this beautiful desert is not their, their home. They are now being called to explore a land flowing with milk and honey, even though they have become accustomed to a desert that is described as beautiful. The place where they might be, the place where they are might be beautiful, but it's still a desert. God has promised them a land flowing with milk and honey, but they first had to be obedient and go investigate the land, which meant that they had to leave the beautiful dry place where they currently were. That required that they leave where they are now, even though it is beautiful. They still have to leave what is beautiful then go uh, and go investigate a place that just might be more beautiful than where they have been. And, and the question for us becomes, what decision are you going to make? Have you become so comfortable in a desert because it is beautiful that you will forsake the opportunity to pursue the promise that God has for you? And many of us, if we are honest, we have allowed uh, the beauty of what pandemic has produced to make us so stagnant and comfortable that we don't want to get up from where we are and go explore what God has for us in our next. Because we've decorated, we've glorified, we've beautified, we have renovated where we are in this dry place and we have lost our desire to go pursue what God has for us in another place. So God says every now and then I'll call you to a mission and an investigation to see which place you are going to choose, which destination you prefer. Do you prefer the beauty of the promised land or are you comfortable selling for, settling for the desert just because it is described as being beautiful? I need somebody to slap five with yourself even in your house. If you're riding in the car, wherever you may be, you might be laying in the bed and tell yourself, I want allow the beauty of the desert to make me abandon the land that is flowing with milk and honey finally I'm done finally I'm done not only does it promote our drive not only does it illuminate our preferred destination but lastly it measures how prone we are to follow direction how prone we are to follow directions because verses 17 through 20 really lay out the directions. They lay out uh, what exactly the people are supposed to do when they get into the land. He says, I want you to go in through the Negev, through the southern part of the country, and I want you to go then into the hill country, and I want you to go see what the land is like, and I want you to determine if the people are weak or strong. I want you to determine if it's a lot of them or if it's just a few of them. I want you to determine what kind of land they are living in is it good land is it bad land and what kind of towns have they developed and and do, does the city have any walls or is the, uh, the city un, unwalled and unfortified what's the soil look like is it fertile soil or is it bad soil are there any trees and vegetation in the land he says and not only do I want you to examine all of that he says as much as you can I want you to slip into somebody's backyard and pull a knife out of your bag and cut off some of their grapes and bring back some some of the grapes so we can taste what the grapes in the promised land taste like. Moses gives them specific instructions. He tells them exactly what to do and they have to follow these instructions to the T because if they don't follow these instructions to the T they might mess around and risk being seen by the giants and having to engage in a battle earlier than what God has told them to so they've got to learn how to follow God's instructions and do 
exactly what God told them to do the way God tells them to do it and how God tells them to do it they've got to go get the information but in order to get the information to get the right information they have to follow Moses' exact instructions even if the instructions don't make complete sense to them but because they might ignite a battle and if they ignited this battle it was going to throw off the plan of how they were supposed to walk into what God had already promised for them even in the face of some strange instructions on the surface they had to be precise in their obedience come here can I tell you something I'm done with the sermon but is there anybody who can be honest and say pastor sometimes I have a hard time getting what God wants me to get out of a situation because I don't follow the instructions that God gives me the way God gives them pastor I hear what God tells me to do but every now and then I'll change some of the instructions and change some of my actions because I heard what God said but I just don't understand what God is doing but can I tell you something you've got to learn how to do what we all used to do as a child as I was growing up there was a game that we used to play and the game that we used to play is you had to do whatever the leader said but you only did what the leader said if they begin their instruction by saying Simon says and it was really an indication to see who could follow instructions and who was really listening so that they could get all of what they needed to get so the leader would stand in front of us and the leader would say touch your head and somebody would begin to reach for their head and then the leader would say you're out because I didn't say Simon says and then the leader would say Simon says touch your ear and everybody would grab their ear and the leader would look back at us and say y'all did good because you followed the instruction because of what Simon said to you and I started thinking about that thing this week and if I can follow Simon's instructions then most certainly I can follow the Savior's instructions and my testimony on a Sunday is Lord I'm available to you my will I give to you and I'll do whatever you say do I want you to use me Lord to show someone the way and I want you in to enable me to enable me to say I want you to understand that my storage is empty and Lord I am available to you and I'll go where you tell me to go and I'll look for what you tell me to look for and I'll get what you tell me to get and I'll do what you tell me to do and I'll say what you tell me to say because I'm getting myself ready to walk into what you want to do when I leave this dry place come here somebody in the middle of a pandemic 18 months later and still wearing masks and still preaching to an empty sanctuary and still trying to figure out what God is speaking and what God is saying but what I've discovered is that I'm not trying to lean to my own understanding and I'm not trusting my own knowledge but I'm looking I'm evaluating I'm investigating and I'm preparing because God has a land flowing with milk and honey and he says Sammy keep doing what you're doing and keep investigating and keep planning and keep preparing and keep investigating and keep looking and keep serving and keep worshiping and keep praising and keep dancing and keep praying because you don't know what I'm about to release come on somebody even in your house open up your mouth throw your head back and begin to give God praise because I'm investigating what God is about to drop in my lap I'm investigating the victory he's already won I'm investigating the promise that's already fulfilled open up your mouth throw your head back and give God praise if you know that you've got a promise on its way so just keep looking and just keep preparing and just keep evaluating and just keep investigating
investigating because eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard and it hasn't entered into the hearts of man all that God wants to do for those who love him and are called according to his purpose give God praise give him praise give him glory give him honor and he'll Keep investigating. You keep looking. You keep preparing. Because God, watch this, is not making a way. <laughs> the way already exists. And the way is already in place. He's just giving you a preview of what he has already done on your behalf. Fact of the matter is pandemic can leave us in a place that we become accustomed to. So much so that we don't realize it's just the desert. But there's a land that's been prepared for us. There's a reality that has been prepared for us. On the other side of this dry place, God just wants to know if we'll stretch our faith enough to go check it out. I don't know what that may be in your life. I don't know what the investigations are that he has called you to, but I do know that whatever God wants to do in the next of your life requires that you have some information now. Move beyond the place of comfortable, move beyond the place of opinion and critique and finger pointing and begin to explore what next is possible if we don't allow the desert to drive us apart. Hear me, church family. Don't spend so much time belly aching in the desert that you miss the opportunity to investigate what's possible in the next because you've become discouraged by the dry place. Mm -mm. Let it promote your drive. Choose another preferred destination and make sure you follow God's instructions to a T. He, he tells you exactly what to do, where to go, when to do it, how to do it, what to pick up, what to put down, what to say, what not to say, what conversations to entertain, what folks you need to hang up on and block. He gives you all of that. We've just got to make sure that we're prepared to do the investigation that he has required of each and every one of us. Doors of the church are now open. Perhaps there's somebody watching us today who's never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Never asked him to come into your heart, to come into your life, to save you, to change you, to live in you. You say, today's my day. I need to accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and savior for the very first time. If that's you, I want you to log on to joinpleasantgrove.org if today's your day to accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior, to begin to investigate what life with Christ is really like. I, I want you to fill out some information. Tell us who you are. Tell us about the decision you're making for Jesus Christ today so that we can be in touch with you this week to welcome you to the family of faith. That's joinpleasantgrove.org. Secondly, you say, Pastor, I need to hit the reset button on my relationship with God. I walked away from the investigation, but I'm ready to come back. If that's you, I want you to know he'll literally wipe your slate clean and give you all that you need to start all over again. I want you to log on to joinpleasantgrove.org as well. Make a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ today. Pastor, I'm coming back into my relationship with Jesus Christ, and he's ready. He's waiting to receive you. Thirdly and finally, you say, Pastor, I, 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 need to, I need to connect with a church family, with a church home. This is the place where God wants me to anchor and plant and connect. Even while we're still trying to figure out when we'll come back in person, I believe that this is where God wants me so that I can accomplish the investigation that God has assigned to my life for this season. 
I also want you to go to joinpleasantgrove.org and say, today's my day to become a part of the Grove family, and I can't wait to be your pastor. All of the amazing people connected to our church can't wait to hug on you, to love you, to let you know how excited we are to add you as our new auntie, new uncle, new cousin, new friend, new family member. We can't wait to get to know you. Those are the three appeals I have for you today. You need to accept Jesus Christ. You need to hit the reset button on your relationship with God. You need to recommit your life to God. Or you need to connect with God's church today. If any of the three of those apply to you, even as we sing, I want you to grab your device and head over to joinpleasantgrove.org. We're waiting on you. We're ready to celebrate the decision that you've made. Come on. You ought to know him. Come on, somebody. Get to know him. Get to know him. Come on, come on. Real big, real big right now.